Greetings and welcome back to another episode of Effort Plus Law modding tutorials and in today's episode I'm gonna show you how we can detect when the player picks up a consumable. This is something that I wanted to do for the longest time but I really thought that eventually there was gonna be a patch which is maybe gonna add a callback or maybe a more elegant way of doing it but that patch never came so I figured that maybe it's prime time to actually show you how to do it because we have to implement some of the logic ourselves. One thing I would like you to focus on here is maybe not the actual code, but more maybe how these callbacks that I'm using work and how they correlate to what we actually want to achieve. So at the end, if you maybe understand the concept, you should be actually able to apply this, not to only consumables, but to any active item that you pick up, to any item that you pick up, or maybe anything else that can happen or that you can pick up in the game. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we do here is just register the mod. And of course, that's something that I've done in every single video. And then I just set up some consumables or some variables at the start, which keep track of how many consumables I have. These are just starting values. It doesn't necessarily mean that these are the values that the player will have when they start the game. For that, I'm using this particular function, set starting consumables. And this and the check consumables function are both tied to the MC post update callback, while the render callback is used for debug text, which is just to show what's going on on the screen so we can actually see that something is happening. So the set starting consumables, what happens is the first time when you actually enter the game, the, the game has to execute all of this code and actually start kind of get it going. And for that reason, I use a Boolean variable called is started. And I just set that as a start to false. And then I check if the is started is false, I set all of the variables that I have that keep track of many consumables I have to the current value of whatever the player is holding. So if the player has a bump like Isaac or maybe has coins like Judas, I'll set these particular variables to those values. And this is, this is just going to serve as my starting point or maybe from which point I actually go onwards. You can imagine that if I just used zeros, characters like Judas would have considered that you picked up a consumable when you actually spawn into the game, which is not something that you necessarily want to do. Then I, I set the is started boolean variable to true, which means that this particular block of code is going to only execute once. This is maybe, the mo maybe not the most elegant way of going about things, and maybe there are some additional checks, uh, checks which you want to do, because this means that every time you restart the game, the value of this variable is going to reset, it's going to be back to false, and the values are going to start up again. And in this case, this is something that a kind of wanted to do, but if you want to maybe synchronize or just set these variables to a particular value, if, for example, the time counter of the game is at 1, which means you just started the run, that's something that you can do as well. But in this case, I just wanted to maybe showcase it, how you can get the starting variables of, I mean, starting values of the, not variables, of, of the pickups and set them into the variables so you can use them later on. The main reason I'm showing you this is the check consumables function. So now that we actually set the starting values to what the player has when they start the game, we need to check whatever that number has incremented or decremented. So you can imagine that a pickup would be defined as if in this frame you have five coins and in the next frame you have six coins, that means that you in that frame picked up a coin. So that indicates that if a number, if a particular number increases, that means that you pick up a coin a coin of a particular value. So in this case, this is exactly what we're kind of abusing in this situation. So we check the check consumables and in this particular function, what we do is because this is called every single frame or about every single frame, it's called periodically with the MC post update callback, we track the values of the previous frame and then we compare them to the current frame. So let's say that we just start the game, we have zero coins and th that's all there is to it. So the current coins is zero, the, our current value of the coins, so not, not the variable, but our current value of the coins is also zero. This means that this will not execute, which is something that we want. And then we save the these frames value of how many coins we have to a variable called current coins and then we use that in the next frame. So we go in the first frame and remember this current coins variable is still has the value of the last frame. If it didn't pick up a, a coin that means that this would remain the same which means that this wouldn't execute but let's simulate maybe a situation where we do pick up a coin. Let's say that we have five coins and we stumble upon a new one. So we have five coins and the previous value of the coins is five because this is what we set it. And in that frame, we pick up a coin and now the current value of the coins is six. So when this particular function executes, the current coins, the, the variable is gonna have a value of five and the current coins that we carry on the player, we're gonna have a value of six. And because of that, that means that our current value of the coins that we have is bigger than the previous value. And then we indicate that by saying debug text is picked up a coin. 
You can do the same thing with the keys, the bombs or the hearts, but also you can do the same thing with has golden key or has golden bomb. But in this case, you wouldn't check whatever the value is smaller or higher. You would check whatever the previous frame was false, which means that we didn't have a golden key. And if this frame is true, which means that we just picked the golden key up. And the same goes for golden bomb. For, as for hearts, you have a few separate functions which you can use to detect whatever the player has picked up a heart, a soul heart, a black heart, an eternal heart, a golden heart, or even if they picked up an item or maybe an eternal heart which gave them a full heart container. And you, you can get the full heart containers by using the function get max hearts. When you actually understand the logic, you can apply it to anything else. So you can use the function has collectible to a particular collectible and then you can check with the same process if in a particular frame the player has actually picked up let's say quad shot and if they did maybe you can do something with that so if you want to add your new items to the game you can check uh, and maybe you want to do something when the player picks up that item this is maybe the process you would also utilize to actually maybe drop some coins when the player picks up that item I sincerely hope that in the future we'll get some more updates with additional callbacks which will actually fix and add these requested features but for now this is the only way to do it maybe the best way to do it i'm not really sure but i'll show you i'll go in the game now and actually show you that this works Welcome to the game. So I just want to show you that this actually works. So when we walk over the coin we expect the text on the screen to pop saying picked up the key which is exactly what happens. The same should go for a bomb, for a heart, and a coin. And the way we coded it, it actually works for every coin. So even if you pick up a nickel, you're not gonna see it because nothing changed, um, but even if you pick up a nickel, this is gonna indicate that we picked up a consumable, which is correlated to a coin. What you could do maybe is detect how, for how much coins you've actually increased. So if you had something like a nickel, you would say that your coin count has increased by five. There are some problems if you maybe have uh, a counterfeit penny or whatever, so maybe that's not the best way of going about it, but this is definitely maybe a start to maybe just a logic that you can apply whenever you want to detect when something is being picked up or whenever maybe you lose something, because the same logic can be applied whenever you spend a key or any consumable and you just have to reverse uh, the if statement so you get if the next frame's value is lower than the current frame, that means that you used up a key and that means that maybe you can do something in that case. So we're at the end of this video as well, and I know a lot of people don't make it to the end usually, but I really wanted to say that I really expected that there were gonna be more patches and more API updates to the game, and for that reason I didn't really focus on maybe the little things which I could have covered just because I thought that in the future there were gonna be more elegant solutions how to do it. If you go look in the reference manual some things or some descriptions still say to do which indicates that they are still working on it but since it's been so long and they haven't given us any communication I just felt like this was the prime time to actually release a video like this. I'm still getting a lot of questions and I don't want to feel or make you feel ignored because I know a lot of people or maybe the majority of people have subscribed to this channel for this educational content and I don't have anything against it it's just a problem that I don't want to maybe overlap with other tutorials which exist but at the same time I also want to give you a, a very specific type of instruction I just want to tell you that the title of the video is supposed to tell you what you want to do you enter the video you watch it and you know how to do that particular thing but the problem is there were a lot of problems or questions which I get asked which are maybe not related or maybe don't warrant a full video so for that reason if you have any small questions I might just pile them up and just kind of answer a few of them in a single video just to showcase how it's done I think that might be a better format from now on maybe focusing on resolving more specific questions maybe something like a F a FAQ and I could focus on those questions as well because I think that would be more beneficial for all of us in the long run. So if you have any questions which maybe don't portray, uh, which aren't very large or maybe aren't, or you, you would think that they take maybe like a max of one or two minutes to answer, please leave them in the comments and I'll, I'll, I'll make a, a video supporting that. And if there's a lot of questions, I'll make multiple videos on that particular topic. So if, if it did, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.